Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Voice Pastor Q. Thank all you guys for joining me again for our 12 p.m. prayer along with our daily word. Uh, this segment today, I'm going to call it a word for you. I've been doing these a lot on uh, YouTube. Thought I'd bring it to uh, Facebook to be able to uh, give you guys a word. I was praying. And um, God gave me a message out of the book of Exodus, I believe. So if you have your Bibles, if you're home, if you want to get your Bible, get this, grab your Bible for a second or how you want to do it, go to the book of Exodus, chapter. 32 i believe i have it there in the comments and i want to give you a word call it word for you titled the golden calf a lot of us that's familiar with the story of moses and exodus and things in the old testament the bible uh know a little bit about the story of the golden calf but i'm going to give you uh what it really means and how you can avoid creating a golden calf for yourself so exodus chapter 32 uh, go to the uh, first, I think it's verses 1 through 4 of Exodus chapter 32. That's where I want you guys to be. So take some time, turn there. The uh, the message is going to be called the Golden Calf. Um, just pray God, give me the ability to be able to teach it and to be able to give you explanatory of what his word is saying. Through the Holy Spirit, hopefully I can be able to um, explain it the same way I hear it. So join me in a word of prayer. Let me, let's me let pray, and then I'll give you what the word is saying. Father, we just thank you right now for this word. I pray, oh, Father God, that no flesh will be glorified in your presence. I pray, oh, Father God, for confidence. I pray for wisdom. I pray for an understanding. You say, all oh, you're getting, get understanding. Thank you for your word today, for your people. Thank you for the situation. In spite of, you're still God. We still honor and worship you. We know we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. So, Father God, we just continue to thank you. We bless your holy name. For this moment, in Jesus' name, we pray and we thank you. Amen. Praise God. So, the story about the golden calf, how it started was, uh, this is something that God deliberately did. So, Moses went up to Mount Sinai, I believe, to get the Ten Commandments from God. Now, God knows strategically what's in the heart of the people, but he wants what's in the heart of the people to be exposed, right? You know that people will be exposed after a period of time. Sometimes you just have to wait it out and you'll see, you know, when you know, you know, when you say, um, I'm waiting for a person to be able to show their true colors in, in long, if you wait long enough, you have patience, you'll be able to see what they call the wolf in the sheep's cold. And you'll be able to see the phoniness. You'll be able to see basically who's who, if you make them wait, you know, people have a 90 day rule, 60 day rule. And you know, I'm gonna make you wait just to see who you are well god is the same type of way so when moses is up there supposed to be getting the commandments from god god says what i'm going to do i'm going to delay moses from getting the word which is the commandment and i'm going to expose the people because if i send moses back too fast then i'll never be able to expose the people so moses so god allowed moses to stay on top of the mountain longer and while moses is on top of the mountain um for the period of time having this exchange with god just sitting there waiting with talking with god the people are down at the bottom of the mountain saying listen what's going on with moses what's taking him so long to be able to come back has he brought us out this far to be able to forsake us and then um they said listen man um i don't think he's coming back down so they devised and they created their own little plan they went to moses brother who was aaron and they were like um yeah uh listen we need you to make us a god to go before us because this moses we don't know what has become of him so aaron's like okay get all your gold earrings and get all things like that and the bible says he took all their belongings and he made them a golden calf and they and the Bible says that they fashioned it and um, they created this calf. Now, now the theologians and the uh, scholars believe that the reason why they created a calf because there was um, there was a um, a bull that they used in uh, for Baal and under pagan and uh, false gods. That was a form of false gods that they brought up out of Egypt. So this is what God did. God says, I'll make the people wait so I can expose what's inside of them. So my message today is watch yourself on creating a golden calf. I'm hearing, I'm listening to Bowser. I'm listening to Trump. I'm listening to um, Hogan. I'm listening to everybody. And what they keep talking about is delaying, right? And they're talking about expanding. And this is fearful to people because the more they're talking about expanding, that means that it's a longer time for you and I get back to normality and get back to work. Now, within that time, there can be a golden calf that you can create. A golden calf is something that you create and it's inside of you. And when you get tired of waiting, what you do is you allow this thing to come out. But God wants it to come out because what he wants to expose you. Uh, God was showing me in prayer. He says, he says, Q, I'm going to expose ministries. 
Uh, I'm going to expose pastors. Uh, I'm going to expose people. I'm, I'm going to expose everything. I'm going to expose you. This is what God is telling me in prayer. He says, I'm going to expose you because the longer that I get you to wait, I'm going to be able to get you to see yourself. And I've even been noticed that the longer that we've been out our regular schedule program, that God is exposing things that we don't like. And the longer that we're forced to be in this situation, attitudes, anger, um, you know, being irritable, all these things that God is showing, we can't sit, we're restless. Um, all the issues and things that are being exposed, stuff you're going through with your spouse, stuff you're going through with your relationship, all that stuff has been there. The, um, the, the problem is that we, we, ha we have found out how to, uh, you know, sweep it under the rug, as they say, or we have pr found out how to be able to suppress it. And, and God says, listen, the people that I brought up out of Egypt, they have false gods w in their side of their heart. And he says, how I'm going to get that God that they serve out of them, I'm going to bring them to a place that's going to force them to be able to wait. If I can force you to wait, then I'm going to force you to be able to expose what's inside of you. So God was showing me, he says, listen, this waiting side, this time of waiting, I'm going to start to expose people. And the exposing, and the Bible says, listen, that the light has a way of exposing the darkness. Uh, everything that's done in the dark show come to light. This exposure is not a fearful thing for one to be able to say, you know what? Oh, I'm afraid to be exposed. Don't be afraid for to be exposed because unless something is exposed, that thing can't be healed. That's why they have x-ray so they can expose it. And once they can expose it, then they can heal it. But nobody wants to get an x-ray. But God says, I want to be able to treat it. You're going to find out in this season of waiting, you're going to see people strategically start to come up stuff. You're going to see Pat, you're going to see where the heart of your pastor is right now during the waiting season. You're going to see um, the heart of your spouse. You're going to see the heart of your friends. You're going to see people go through desperate measures in these next couple of next couple of weeks or months. And they're going to show you who they really are because they forced to wait. And God says he's doing this. Why? Because he's going to expose what's in the heart of the people. If Moses had came down right away, it would have never been exposed in the people that the whole time they were following God. They were in love with another God. Can you imagine how it is to be following something else, but still be in love with somebody in love with something else. That's like you're in a relationship, but still in love with your ex, but you're just in this relationship because this particular relationship is beneficial, but you're really, your heart is somewhere else. God says, though I have brought the people out, I still don't have their heart. God says, so I'm going to expose what's in their heart. Though they're following me, I still don't have their heart. And he says, and what God was showing me, he says, listen, People are praying to me right now for the opening of doors, Q, but I still don't have their heart. And I'm not going to open the door until I have their heart. He says, everybody prays when they want something, but it doesn't mean I have their heart. He says, I brought a great people up out of Egypt and they were still in love with the gods of Egypt, but they were following me and benefiting from me and eating my food and benefiting from everything that I did for them. But when I made them wait, what did they create? They created a golden calf to be able to go before them, something that had no life. They served a God that they created with their own hands. This is such a blessing because you and I can create our own gods. When God made Abraham wait, he created his own son, created his own relationship, created his own miracle. Sometimes God is saying, listen, you have to learn to be able to wait. You don't need a co-signer. You don't need nobody to go in with you. God says if you need to get to a point where you wait uh, specifically and strategically on him and stop trying to create your own miracles. So many people have created our own blessings, created our own miracles. It's not God. It's everything I've learned, God has showed me that it's not a blessing. How many times have you have gotten somebody to do something with a pay stub for you? Have you got somebody to do something under the table? Then you turn around and say, I got a blessing from God. That's not a blessing from God. That's of your own hands. God has been showing me a long time ago. He says, Q, a lot of the stuff that you have, you have because of the people that you know. It wasn't because you were blessed by me. You must understand when you get blessings from God, God don't need a forged pay stub. He don't need a cosigner. He don't need you to know anybody. It's just all about God. God says a lot of stuff that you do and I do, you need a favor. You need somebody to do something for you. God said, that's not me. That's why Abraham got it mixed up. He thought that um, him and his wife thought that they needed somebody else to give them a blessing there's somebody right now who think that the reason why their business or their things is not working out for them because they need somebody else god says it's not the fact that you need somebody else you is just not working for you because you don't have me you're wrong to think and i've thought this way before too that it's 
somebody that can put you on. God said it's not about it's nobody on your friend list, nobody in your family that can put you on. The reason why you're not put on because you don't have the heart to be put on. When you get the heart to be put on, then you shall be put on. Eminem had a song talking about um, I think it was lose yourself, and he says you have to be ready for when the moment has come. God says everybody want to be put on just to get to a place where they're going to be set back and step back. So God says instead of trying to get put on, instead of trying to get somebody to help you get to where you need to be. God, the Bible says that a man's gift will make room for him. Stop begging people to support your business, begging people to support your ministry, begging people to like and share. God says no more begging. God says if you would be able to hone your craft and be able to hone your gift, you wouldn't need another man to do anything for you. Stop being upset because people haven't done anything for you. And you are wrong to think that it's somebody out there who can put you on when God says that all it takes for him is to say yes and an amen. With that said. Do not create the golden calf. Do not create something in this season that you're going to regret that you want to give back. Abraham wished he could have took back what he created with the bond woman. Once they made that golden calf, it was theirs to keep, but it was exposure because God wanted to see what was in their heart. Notice that what was in their heart was actually manifested. They were in love with a false God. And the thing that they was in love with was the very thing that they created. And then once they created it, then God told Moses, he said, now you can go back down because I want you to see what type of people you have. This is what God will do. He says, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll take you away for a second, right? Then bring you right back to something then to show you what you have. It's very, very painful when God shows you what you have. You ask God for the truth, but then when he shows you what you have, you get upset. God says, now Moses... Since I've held you up here, I've held you up here for a moment because I wanted you to see the type of people you have. Get blessed by this. I want you to see who your people are when you're not around. So now that I've held you for a while, I'm going to send you back around them same people and I'm going to show you who they are because they act one way around you. But I held you long enough to be able to show you what type of people they were. See, a lot of us stop attending churches and stop being around certain people because I found out who you were when I wasn't around. But then when I came back, I thank God for removing me because it helped me to be able to see you because I couldn't see you when I was close to you. I had to be removed from you. Then I watched and from the outside. Have you ever watched somebody that was messy do the same messy things that they were doing when you were close to them from the outside? And you say, man, I couldn't see it when I was close to you, but I got a great view right now of who you are. And that's why I stay my distance. God says, you don't know these people, Moses. Let me pull you away from them from a while. Let me take you up to the mountain. Then I'm going to send you back down there. When Moses came off the mountain, he had the tablets in his hand, which was the Ten Commandments. Moses broke the commandments even before they got before he even gave them to the people. He threw them on the ground out of disgust and frustration, be frustration because he couldn't believe that after him talking to God and telling them that God had brought them out of the land of Egypt to come back down and find out that they had another God already set up. And you know, the thing about this, you know, who helped Mo you know, who helped the people create the God. Moses' very own brother, the very person who sat beside him, his interpreter, his best man, his brother, was the one who put the scheme all together. The one who God was speaking to to help Moses interpret what was being said. His brother, not his friend, not his enemy, his brother, the closest person to him, was in charge of creating the golden calf. Get yeah, blessed what I'm saying. So in this time, watch that you and I don't create these golden calves. The golden calf is something that in your time of waiting, you create or that it, it comes out. You have to watch that. While, while Moses was away, what were they doing? They were creating a golden calf. They were creating something to be able to follow after instead of sticking to the words of God. Moses was just delayed. He wasn't denied. The word wasn't denied. The word was just delayed. He took a while to come down with the word, but that didn't mean the word wasn't coming. Um, Saul did the same thing when they told him not to move. And he said, I move. Why? Because the people, the people told me to do this. And God and, and Samuel said, listen, Saul, you're not worthy to be king anymore because there's no way people should allow you to do something different than what God says. If God stretches this thing out, as I was just listening to Bowser. If they stretch it out another 45 days, what can you do? There's, there's not a prayer. There, I, I just told a gentleman at my job, I says, listen, he says, we need to pray to change this thing, Q. I says, listen, man, you can't pray to change the will of God. I don't know who think they have the power 
to change the will of God. Whatever God's will is, that's what it is. God says prayer doesn't change the situation. Prayer changes you. So if you one of them people who think that when I pray, it changes the situation, prayer changes you. What do I mean by that? Prayer changes how you look at the situation. Prayer definitely prayer corrects the individual it doesn't always correct the circumstances prayer doesn't get you out of the lion's den it keeps the lion off you prayer doesn't keep you from the fiery furnace it keeps you from burning prayer doesn't change the people on your job and the people that don't like you it changes you to be able to deal with it whoever told you that prayer is just going to open up the doors and put things back into normality is definitely wrong it doesn't work like that prayer changes you to be able to accept the will of god that's what Jesus had to pray. Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass for me, but not my will, let your will be done. Basically saying what I want versus what you want to do. I accept your perfect will. I don't want to change your will. Change me that I'm able to be able to receive your will. I'm the voice pastor Q. Let me pray with you right now. Father, we thank you for this word. Lord, allow us not to be able to be like our ancestors and create a golden calf. Maybe may, may we wait on you, O oh Father God, and whatever the waiting time may be. Lord, help us to be able to wait. Um, help us to be able to have patience, O oh Lord. Uh, give us endurance, the ability to be able to wait, O oh Lord. Uh, help us through this time, O oh Father God, that we be not anxious for nothing but everything by prayer and supplication. Making our requests made known to you in Jesus' name. Bless you guys.